Hey, it's your guy Tyrell back with the interviews. In today's video, we're going to briefly break down the tactical issue Borussia Dortmund encountered against Wolfsburg and how they were able to overcome it. When we do break it down, what we end up seeing here is Wolfsburg dropping off into a 4-4-2 and Dortmund regaining that same shape that helped them destroy Schalke last week. What we end up seeing here is that with Wolfsburg dropping off into those two banks of four, they were able to cause Dortmund problems that they didn't encounter against Schalke. The manner in which they did look to go about their business was that in that narrow 4-4-2 they had the wider players tucking in to keep that central area compressed and they also had their back line pushing forward sticking closer to Dortmund's attacking three to ensure that those three dropping off couldn't get the ball in pockets of space to push forward they were very compact and cohesive and that's one of the reasons why Schalke struggled they dropped off their pressing was disjointed and there was tons of space in midfield for Brandt, Hazard, Haaland to get on the ball. So when we assess Wolfsburg's overall shape, what you end up seeing here is that you have the front two sitting ahead of the center backs. Their main priority was to box off Hummels to ensure that he could have built attacks from those deeper zones. So they had those two sitting in front of the central center back. If the ball was shifted out to Peace Check or Akanji, the striker ahead of them would shift over and the midfield player that they were in front of would be blocked out of the game by the free Wolfsburg center forward and vice versa. They weren't too worried about Peace Check or Akanji pushing forward, and they wanted to ensure that Hummels wasn't able to dictate the tempo of the game from that center back position. In the midfield zone, you had Delaney and Dahoud just in behind those center forwards, and the only real way that they could get the ball freely was if they shifted to the outside of those forwards to get on the ball in those deep pockets of space. What ended up happening though is that when they stayed in that central position, they were boxed in because Schlager and Arnold were pushing forward to help Wolfsburg compress and deny space in that midfield zone. But as that first half continued and Delaney and Dahoud continued to drop off into that space, what we ended up seeing here was that Arnold in particular would push out to step into the path of Delaney so that he couldn't get on the ball freely. The reason why he was able to do that was because when you look in the wider areas, Mamedi and Stefan were tasked with the wing backs. And then when you look up front, that leaves Wolfsburg in a four v3 against that Dortmund front line. You have Mbabu and Wusion stepping into the path of Brandt and Hazard when they drop off a bit deeper and then Haaland's in a 2v1 battle against the center backs. So that's how Arnold was able to step into that path was because if he did shift into that zone, yes you can have Schlager coming across if the ball is played beyond Arnold but also based off the fact that Brandt and Hazard weren't freely dropping off into those zones created by that space. So as you can see, Wolfsburg's overall shape and their tactical approach initially was very good from a defensive aspect. And when you look at the spaces that Dortmund could find pushing forward, obviously initially you look at Piszczek and Dekanji pushing forward. But the issue here was that they did get themselves into trouble when they pushed beyond that halfway line. We saw Piszczek push forward past his marker and he ended up overrunning the ball and Mamedi stepped in and luckily for Dortmund when Schlager picked up that loose ball, Dahoud was able to come across to ensure that Mamedi couldn't break forward. We saw something similar with Akanji on the opposite side of the pitch and when he ran past his forward marker he was closed down by Stefan and Schlager stepping in and when Stefan looked to play that forward pass into Weghorst, again it was Delaney coming across this time to block off that pass. The key here for Dortmund was that whenever it looked like Wolfsburg were going to break in transition, Delaney, Dahoud, and Hummel stepping forward did a very good job of halting those breaks. When you look higher up the pitch, it was odd that Dortmund weren't looking to play more passes into Holland, who was doing a good job on the rare occasions when he received the ball with his back to goal and linking play with his teammates. Out in those wider areas, Brandt and Hazard were replicating what they were doing again against Schalke that was so successful last week, but they were closed down by the fullbacks. We did see some variation from those two with Brandt looking to drop off into those gaps in between Stefan and Schlager or ahead of them to receive the ball. At times, if he did do that, Rafael Guerrero could move into more central positions 
or into the, in that advanced position ahead of Mbabu. And with Hazard in those opening 20 minutes, he was looking to make runs in between Brooks and Ruzion. And there was times where Hummels was playing long balls over the top. And frankly, that could have been a route for Dortmund, but we didn't see enough of that. But that was the movement that we got from those two, dropping off deeper from Brandt and moving ahead of that midfield bank. And Hazard was looking to break into that space in between Brooks and Roussillon. But with Dortmund having issues finding that front three and getting the midfield involved, what we ended up seeing from them was that as Wolfsburg looked to compress space and stay very narrow, there was gaps for Rafael Guerrero and Hakimi to push forward. They were constantly getting in beyond Stefan and Mamedi, and that would force the Wolfsburg fullbacks to step out into them. So what it looked like Dortmund's overall ploy was, was to get the ball beyond those narrow wide players into their wing backs and then have Hazard and have Brandt make darting runs into those spaces in behind the Wolfsburg fullbacks that pulls out those center backs and it does create 1v1 situations for Holland, or it can lead to a situation where Hazard and Brandt win those challenges and push forward. On two separate occasions we saw Hummels wrap the ball around Mamedi and Stefan for Hakimi and Rafael Guerrero and initially what we ended up seeing was Brooks coming across to close down Hazard success and when the ball was shifted out into the path of Brandt, he was actually closed down by Ponbracic and Mbabu. So that was a clear example as to how Dortmund were finding space and where they thought that they could get into good goal scoring positions. Ultimately, when we do break down Dortmund's opening goal, it does have a combination of that overload and Dortmund being able to find space out in those wider areas. What we should look at initially is the fact that we had William Brandt dropping off a head of the forwards to get on the ball and that's also saw Rafael Guerrero shift laterally into space as far as ahead of Pangracic before moving back into that wider zone. So what ends up happening here is that we end up seeing Delaney get on the ball and Mamedi step into him because Hakimi was narrow and he was occupied by Arnold. What Delaney ends up doing is he wraps the ball around Mamedi into the path of Hakimi and that pulls out Roussillon. And when Roussillon steps into the path of Hakimi, that's where we end up seeing Brandt shift into that zone. So Brandt ends up shifting towards the touchline to receive Hazard's poked ball into him. He ends up dragging out Brooks. What should happen here now is that Roussillon should be tracking the run of Hazard and we should see Arnold sticking with Hakimi. That doesn't happen. So with Brandt receiving that ball ahead of Roussillon and Brooks, now Arnold has to shift into the path of Hazard to track that movement. That leaves Hakimi free and with Brandt splitting those two, Hakimi receives the ball free at that edge of the box. Schlager does come across to try and close him down, but the issue issue that Wolfsburg encounter here is the fact that Arnold doesn't continue tracking Hazard's run into right half space. So Hakimi has a simple pass into Hazard and Hazard from there is able to play the ball across Pongracic by pulling it back and Haaland slips with Mbabu tracking him but Rafael Guerrero's free in the box because we end up seeing Stefan ignore his defensive duties and he doesn't track that run into the box. But that entire breakdown stems from the fact that Roussillon did did gamble and he tried to close down Brandt with Brooks and although Hakimi still got the ball they were able to save themselves if Arnold tracked that run of Hazard. He didn't do that. Stefan slept on the movement of Rafael Guerrero and with Mbabu tracking Haaland's run to ensure that it wasn't 1v1 in that zone this was simply a defensive breakdown from Wolfsburg but it also highlights what Dorman's overall game plan was and it was successful in the build-up to this goal. And Dortmund should have killed off the game towards the end of that half with a similar move. We ended up seeing Hummels push forward and he split Stefan and Arnold to find Brandt dropping off of Mbabu. Brandt received that ball in that midfield zone. He was able to brush off Arnold and he was able to slide the ball across Schlager into the path of Hakimi running off Mamedi. What should be noted here is that Roussillon wasn't able to shift over into that path because we ended up having Hazard drift laterally to dart into space in between Pongracic and Mbabu and that meant that Haaland was making a similar run in between Brooks and Roussillon. That creates space for Hakimi to push forward also based off the fact that Mamedi wasn't doing a good job of tracking that run.
run. And Hakimi played a first-time square ball across the edge of the box for Hazard checking off Mbappu, but he fired his effort inches wide of the net. But as you can see, that is where Dortmund were looking to find those gaps, and they were able to do a very good job of that as that game continued. From a defensive aspect, Dortmund didn't really encounter any issues. There was the threat of Mbappu constantly making runs beyond Brandt into that right channel position and playing deep early crosses into the box. He played about three or four in those opening 20 minutes. But besides that, you had Brooks looking to push forward and he played some positive passes. And we ended up seeing Arnold split those two center backs and actually find Stefan and find Mamedi in between the lines on a few occasions. But whenever those two players received the ball in those pockets of space, they were closed down by Dahu Delaney or Hummels, or they were forced to play the ball wide or into deeper positions in their own zone. And when we look to the second half, we did see Emery Chan come in for Mats Hummels in that center back position, but Dorman ended up dropping off deeper and looking to play on the counter attack for large spells of that half. And they were able to stifle Wolfsburg's threat. They had 3v2 at the back. They were able to pull the wing backs out to the wider narrow players. And Brandt and Hazard were tasked with pushing into those wider positions to close down potential advanced runs from Mbabu or Roussillon. And in the midfield zone, Dehoud and Delaney did a good job of stepping into Schlager or into the path of Arnold when they looked to get onto the ball. That's how Dortmund were able to cope with that threat. And frankly, they did look nervy at the back and that saw Stefan get into some good positions. Wolfsburg brought on Claus and Bracalo to try and change the game, but they didn't change their system. And eventually saw Stefan moving to left back. And we saw Dortmund bring on Sancho for Brandt. Ultimately, the buildup to that second goal did transpire in transition, and that was what Dortmund wanted. But the wingbacks did play a key role. You ended up having Rafael Guerrero step into that loose ball ahead of Mamedi, and following a combination between Delaney and Dehu to bypass Schlager, you had Holland pulling out Brooks, you had Stefan being pulled out by Sancho, and that led to a 3v1 break with Mbappu looking to recover his positioning. But what also should be noted is that Hakimi was able to get into that goal scoring position based off the fact that when Dortmund won the ball, he initially sped into Wolfsburg's third, running beyond Bracalo to get into that position, and that allowed Sancho to play a min to kill off the game. But when you break down this game as a whole, it was very simple. Yes, Wolfsburg did have a better tactical plan to cope with the movement of Brandt and Hazard in that midfield zone, but as that game did continue, the fact that Stefan and Mamedi weren't trapped tracking the runs of Rafael Guerrero and Takimi eventually led to their downfall. And although this wasn't the best game by Dortmund, they did find a key route to goal. They consistently persisted with it. And with some help with those overloads that we did see last week, Dortmund were able to claim all three points and head into that big game this Tuesday with the chance to cut the gap to one against Bayern. Hi everybody, thanks for watching and subscribe here for your latest tactical analysis and daily commentary on the interview show. And if that wasn't enough, don't forget you could find more organic, unfiltered soccer slash football analysis on the interviews podcast, the best soccer slash football podcast in the world, available on iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Spreaker, and any Android apps on your Android devices.